are listening to the Thanks for Trying podcast, episode three, hosted by myself, The Last Skeptic, with very, very special guests, Asim Chowdhury and Koji Radical. The following recording is unscripted, unadulterated, and recorded live in front of a bunch of my mates in my front room in East London, and thus, there's a lot of sweary language. Thank you very much to Red Leg Rum for providing the booze, and big up to the show producer, Seb White. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode three of the Thanks for Trying podcast, hosted by myself, The Last Skeptic, with my very special guests, Asim Chowdhury and Koji Radical. Right, okay, all right. Um, I just, <laughs> you know, before we started, I was Free just about beers. to <laughs> comment on Koji that you actually sat uh, in the style of AC Slater, but I don't think you, you, you might be too young for a Saved by the Bell. I'm not too young for Saved by the Bell. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched me some Saved by the Bell. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, how deep are you with Saved by the Bell? Couple seasons. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, here's the, here's the test. All right, I'll, yeah. I'll ask Asim first. How do you feel when I say the name Kelly Kapowski? Wow. I say Kelly Wowski. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, Ka- P- Kelly Kapow. <laughs> and how do you feel, Koji Radical, when I say the name Kelly Kapowski? Semi. <laughs> Semi Kapowski. <laughs> well, well, thank you guys for coming coming down today. I, I appreciate uh, the, the 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 solidarity in, in the rum drinking cause. Yeah, man. Um, you've just finished. You've just finished. Um, people just do nothing. Mm-hmm. The the filming. Yeah, man. Yeah. How, how was it? Yeah, it was good, bro. It was a like series three, mm. so it's like it, you know, it, it feels familiar, and it but it's like just kind of like reuniting with all your boys, your friends, with a lot of the same people who did you know the last series. You know, same director, obviously, same production company, producers, makeup people. So it's like a big reunion. We're like a big family. Mm. When you planned it for so long, because we you know we kind of had a bit of a while to plan it. Yeah. And even when we, we even planned stuff well in advance. So like, say if we're doing like you know like now we've got so we've got series three and series four commission yeah, I heard. and when we found that out as, as a double commission we kind of sat in the room and had like literally a hundred storylines on the whiteboard yeah. and just picked them out plus this 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 stuff that we want to do that we kind of we like in a cocky way we're like now you know what save that for series three yeah. save that for series four yeah. so when we actually get there some things we we implement some things we like let's save that so it was it was really cool man it's such it? a strong position do you find that the writing process is a little bit it, it, not easier in a way, but like more fluid because the, the pressure's off because you've got this fan base now. A hundred percent, yeah. I mean, I think that can work for you and against you because uh-huh. obviously, like you were saying before, the pressure is there. Mm. So when you have got a very loyal fan base and they, you know, they're hardcore, yeah. the people who like this the show is because it's, it's a cult. It's yeah. a bit of a cult show, you know. So it's not not everyone knows about it. It's still a bit niche, yeah. but the people who know about it, they fuck with it heavy. Like they're yeah. like, we know, we'll quote you this and that. <laughs> you know, they'll come up to. You. I remember the YouTube shit. So there's pressure in that but then also you've got to remember like these these characters we've been doing since 09 you know 2010 so it's like you know you can just you just start you feel so confident with the character that you can put them in any scenario you can ask me any question and i can just snap into that character it's like a you know it's just like an alter ego for all of us now yeah so when it comes to the writing process we have steve Mm. who steve's is our main writer yeah um and then we all implement stuff so you know we go and give all the storylines you know we then he gives us a, a draft we come back we edit it we add talking heads it's a very collaborative effort but we've got a good system now of everyone knows what they need to do and I think that works with any creative kind of project you're doing if you know your role and you feel confident in your role then you know getting that material and getting those jokes and those storylines is you know it becomes not easy but it becomes fluid and I know they like certain things that I'll do or certain things that Grindr or Beats would say Mm -hmm. not in a cocky way just in a way that I know we know our audience and that's very important you have to know what your audience so now it's been a it's been a you know it's been a blessing man it's just sick and a BAFTA nomination as well yeah that's not too shabby that is a madness because you know we normally only this year we've started getting nominated for shows before that it was just like under the radar would never get anything mm-hmm. you know which is cool we don't you know we're not part of that you know that kind of in terms of british comedy there's always been a system of you know you go to you know, drama school and then maybe you go to yeah. edinburgh and mm-hmm. then you do this and they're all very intellectual yeah. from a certain class system as well it's always yeah. been that way i'm not saying that's anything wrong with it yeah some it's of our greatest comedians and shows they've come from that yeah. that very esteemed comedy background we're, we're different mm-hmm. we're just kids from london like you know i mean 
started rapping back mm. in the day and then instead of making tunes which we should have been doing we started <laughs> fucking around doing stupid <laughs> characters prank calling and obviously our obsession with documentaries and yeah, comedy yeah. and then you know you mix Most those together. together but yeah the BAFTAs are madness like, we ain't gonna win it we are not gonna win it I mean you don't know oh. Well, here's a funny thing, though. Let me just... My producer said this to me. Basically, the shows that are nominated is is People Just Do Nothing, Peep Show, and Peter Kay's Car Show, Car Mm. Share. So, you know when they're going to be announcing the winners? They're going to go, and the winner is P, and I'm going to get up, and they're going to (laughs) go, they're going to go, Peep Show, and I'm going to go, all right. So, we're like, we're we're just waiting for that moment. (laughs) You know what, though? A nomination is, you know, like, that's fucking incredible. It's not not the reason we do it, but at the same time, it's nice to be acknowledged. It's 100% the reason why I do anything, just... <laughs> literally on the off chance that I might be nominated for a BAFTA or a Grammy yeah. or you know I'll, anything I, yeah. I want I just want an award I want best kebab shop of the year I want whatever award they will give me a Donna kebab statue yeah, right? I want it. with grease as well they add the grease it rotates I yeah. want that <laughs> nah it's a, it's a blessing bro you know it's just humble you just humbled us that'll be all right yeah um, and Koji, you were just saying it as well. You're opening for Ghostface. You excited? Yeah, I'm excited as I am about any show. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You kind of got to go and do it and not leave being the support act. Yeah. yeah do you yeah. know what I mean? You have to leave with the intention of making everyone feel like you should have been the headline. So. Yeah. Ghostface is worthy competition. I, I think so. <laughs> you, you, opened, you opened for Saul Williams, didn't you? Yeah. And yeah. he brought you out. Yeah, yeah, that was dope. Sick. It, it's weird, man, because like, all of that stuff is really surreal because... I have really weird heroes, if that makes sense. Like, there was people that, for whatever reason, when I was getting heavily into music, I was just listening to on rotation. And they weren't the artists that, especially people my age, would necessarily gravitate towards or be extremely knowledgeable in, but I liked them. So, like, people that saw was one of them, another guy called Natty, who's a reggae singer. Mm -hmm. Um, I was really, really into it at one point. And Natty put Saul onto my stuff. Oh, sick. And then randomly, I was doing a festival with BBC Radio 6. Mm. And me and Saul were sharing a dressing room. So What? Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Nice. And then I think I'd already been booked for the show by that point. Yeah. So I was like, oh, hi. How you doing? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams, how you doing? And then he, he was like, oh, play me some music that you're listening to. Yeah. So I started playing some like you, real... Yours. Nah, I started <laughs> playing some real like new school shit like... I was playing like Daniel OG plan. Right. He's only with me because he knows I got a plan. And he was just literally, you know, when they do that kind of like A and R tap, where he's just wiggling yeah, his foot. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I like this, man. I like this. I was like, all right, champ. Like, you, know what I mean? like, you don't know what the fuck this is. Saying. <laughs> You're just waiting for someone to come in and yeah. interrupt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally waiting for someone to come take you on stage. But we've done the show, and even that was a pretty surreal experience because like. One of my bigger records is called Bamboo, and mm. the whole last verse was inspired by one of Saul's most kind of famous poems. Wow. Yeah. So it was like that real kind of like, wow, okay, cool, ticked. It's mad that, like, that, that how that shit comes yeah, around yeah, full man. circle. It's very mad. Tick, to be able to tick that box this early as well is kind of crazy. It's fun, yeah. Because when people ask me, like, what, what is your sound like? Who are you most like? Yeah. That I'm like, who can I com- compare you to? Mm. And I'm like, somewhere between Saul Williams and like Master Killer. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a good shout that's, good that's what I yeah I had that you yeah. got the, you that got intensity the intensity yeah, yeah man yeah. you can the, the clarity and kind of push a T as well because you got the, like the, the you know the the, the vote, you can hear every word the clarity's mm, yeah, there but real. you're also saying some stuff yeah I, you know me man that like, music was an accident like do you know what I mean like, it, was, it was an accident and and um, I think my background and other stuff kind of helped me make music more I'd say theatrically yeah if that makes sense. So being able to kind of like control my, my voice from like a theatre background mm-hmm. kind of made it easier for me to sense where I needed to be on the record. Mm. So it, I, I wish it came from like me listening to a bunch of like of like legends and going, yeah, I want a bit of that. But yeah. it was just like... I, I didn't get that on. impression though. Like yeah. you were saying, I couldn't, really, I couldn't really put my finger on it. Yeah. Yeah. Even to the point when I first watched it because he, he sent me the stuff. Mm. And, I was, and at first it was just kind of like, it was so, it was so new and to me yeah. an alien I was like what's this yeah. and it was like literally you can't like place it but now you're talking about the theatrical yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. that definitely came across yeah, right? yeah, I used to be really like, for, for people that don't know so you used to be an artist and you were you, yeah, yeah. And, and you obviously direct videos yeah yeah. so I started off doing fine art and illustration um, my sister got me into dance really really young so I was dancing for about nine years while I was still doing art and illustration and that creative direction and that I was doing like 
or like really early. So I was like teaching art from like 16. And I think I was like, I was um, a board member and um, chairman for a, a Victorian theatre. Wow. When I was like 20. So yeah. I was like on like... A chairman? Board. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, it was long. Please tell me you wore little glasses and uh, <laughs> no, I, 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 always came, I always came as road as possible. Like, because it was all like proper execs on the yeah. board as well like even I think one of the owners of Shell was on the board what? or something like that and like I just come like just literally just mash up from the day before <laughs> so, I mean just sitting in this meeting trying not to fall asleep but like <laughs> it was they like new ideas I had them you yeah. just, you're just you've always been AC Slater I think this is right <laughs> <laughs> so we just I'm literally, established man yeah Nickelodeon did shape me <laughs> well, I said, I said the other day I said, I said something to a girl she was talking about this her friend, his name was Roger, and he was a dickhead. And I was like, "Go home, no, Roger. Roger." No, and she was like, "She was like, what do you mean? Go, what do you mean?" And I was like, "Fucking, you, you have to, are, you have to back away. You are thing. a baby. <laughs> you're a sperm right now. You're an emblem. Like you're." I was you have like, to walk away. There's so little old. things that, like, like I'm, oh, even man. when I'm out, if I'm talking to a girl and she doesn't know what the Fresh Prince is. Oh, I'm, that's just, I'm scared it's a madness I'm it's scared. either that or if they don't know who David Attenborough is just yeah. bring you up David Attenborough I don't you know normally I don't like name dropping yeah? no, <laughs> this, is, oh, this is David you Attenborough know, yeah? this, is, this is David Attenborough this yeah? is fine this man yeah let no me just say way. something yeah you know like we all like you know the whole obsession with celebrity mm. and all this stuff like we are in that generation now yeah, aren't yeah. It? Where, you know dumb people get famous mm. stupid people get famous yeah. you just gotta look good you gotta have something you gotta have an Instagram you get fucking dogs with millions of followers and that. that's all good but all I'm saying <laughs> is we live in that kind of this man yeah I think his achievement is like you can't understand like say if the, the world was just completely you know it was just finished yeah. and all we had left was David or the next species whoever came yeah. all they had was David Attenborough documentaries oh. that amount of wealth of knowledge that he's yeah. given to us yeah. as a civilization is incredible so it he's makes, definitely it, it makes me think that did he give it to us or does he just have a really nice voice? No, I th- oh. no, no, here's, no, no, but listen. Oh. <laughs> no, no, but okay, so then let me, that brings me to, I was working in Chiswick because um, before I was doing all the writing and acting shit and it was just like a normal TV job. It was an ITV, it was like broadcasting. So it was like technical when the show's coming, make sure everything's all good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Loved the job, but a very technical, not creative job, but good, you know, good job. And he came to our, because he lives in Richmond, isn't it? Right. And he came and he did a, an hour and a half talk yeah. And um and he, I, I and it was raffles for the ticket, yeah. And then I, you know, obviously I've missed out on the raffle, but I paid, you know what I mean, to go and I was mm. like paid someone thirty quid for their ticket. It was free, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But I paid then I sat front row, yeah, with my with my friend and I was just in awe of yeah. him. And then at the end there was a moment to ask questions and, and the enthusiasm this man had about nature. He was talking about when he it all started, he was just in his back garden, he used to dig up fossils and the love the man had mm. for the, the the earth. Yeah. And for like just life. Yeah. All these kind of things. But now I went I went to chat to him and I was like and I said to him, I went, D bro. And I called him, I gave, and he went, he went, he went, I like, he goes, I like, I like, I like that, I, I like that name. And I, and, I, and I can't even remember what I asked him because I was just in awe. But it was one of those moments where I've met, I've met during my little whatever I've done, I've met some famous people, yeah. I've met some, you know, a few heroes of mine. But this man, mm. I was just, I crumbled. I mean, and of course, that kind of leads me to another <laughs> question that, that I have uh, for you. No. Of course, you're in Hoff the Record. Yeah. <laughs> With David Hasselhoff, come on. <laughs> Yeah, that's mad. Yeah, that's... I mean, it's a bit of a shame because it's... The show is on Dave. They, they've marketed it as this, this you know, it's a David Hasselhoff show. And everyone, mm. on the surface, if you watch the trailers, you think, oh, it's a reality show. Mm. But this show is like a... It's like a Kirby Enthusiasm-esque mockumentary where he's basically completely taking the piss out of himself. Okay. And it's like, yeah, he's just ripping himself. And it's... We love that as Brits. Yeah. We, you know, we, if you can take the piss out of yourself, that's self-deprecating kind of like... We like that. That endears Step us. One. You know what I mean? It's like, you don't take yourself too seriously. And he's done all of that. And it, it, I'm really proud of it because series one I did like a you know a bit of additional material and improv and series two they really let us get involved creatively so we were sitting there storylines and loads of stuff so it's I'm really proud of it I mean it's you know it's filthy my mum hates it because I <laughs> the stuff I say because I play like a Terry and he's a oh. cab driver and he's fucking filthy do you know what I mean? everything oh, okay. he talks about it's just sex lads it's a, it's a kind of a spoof on lad lad yeah, culture because yeah. I find that quite fascinating that mm. lad culture I think we all have it in us a little bit yeah. you know we get a bit lad you gotta watch yourself like oh my god how many fisting jokes did you make no fisting jokes no fisting <laughs> jokes I made a few micro dick jokes I made a few blowjob jokes I made a danger wank joke oh uh, yeah but you have to I was like everyone loves wank. a danger wank you know what I mean you leave the door yeah. open a little bit and you want to get caught oh yeah do you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean and it's, yeah, that's in episode one actually 
<laughs> but um, yeah. starting strong. <laughs> and, the, and, and the Hoff, like you know, everyone says, "What's he like? What's he like?" For me, he was a legend because he is a lad. He is an apps. He's one of the ultimate lads. He's mm, bait watch. Mm, he's like mm. he's like you know when you think of a man, you think yeah. of like you know old school. And it's just um yeah, he was yeah, he was a G man. He likes yeah. people just do nothing. That's you know, sick. and he's a fan. He gave I gave him a crop tee, rock D, put on his his, his uh, Twitter and all that. I saw that. Yeah. He yeah, he was sick. blessed, man. And he could take the piss out of himself. Yeah. Um, a lot of the stuff in the show that happens has happened to him in real life. Mm, I can We've imagine. actually had to tone down some of it because he's like, no, no, you can don't don't put that in. Like, you know, because it's like too real for yeah, him, yeah, like, yeah. you know. Do you, do, you, do you think he ever banged Pamela Anderson? That was the first in, in episode one. <laughs> in episode one of the well, the beginning of the show, the what first you thing you that? see, he gets in, he comes out of the airport, and you think he's in this limo, and the limo drives off, and I'm there with a sign saying Hoff, and I'm like, oh, right, Hoff, and I'm like, the character's a fanboy, yeah, but like, kind of really, really kind of a bit creepy, yeah, and I'm like, fuck it, now is it really are you a hologram? Like, can I touch you? And then he gets in the car, the first question I ask him is, Hoff. Mike, did you bang Pam Anderson? <laughs> was she the biggest prick tease in the world? And he, and it's just like that's the first thing you know straight great away. Minds, great minds. Oh, that's the question everyone wants <laughs> to ask him, though, isn't it? Everyone. But people probably don't ask him. But then yeah. in the show, we thought it'd be funny if his cab driver, the first thing he says is yeah. that. So, um, Whoa, and he's cool, and he's just a nice dude. Oh, he's he's, he's just a naughty. I mean, you know, he's just he's so famous though. Mm. It's ridiculous how famous we were filming this one scene, and um, he caused three accidents because we were in New Malden outside a kebab shop yeah imagine that yeah imagine that and then one guy on the one bike you know that when you do the double looks the guy was on this bike and he went like that and then he went like that, and he went straight into another car and then another that car went into this other car and then I saw a woman fall over as well when she saw him just, just fell over just stacked it no but he is like and we were on this rooftop and a drone a drone came up and what? it was paparazzi drone and it's like it's a horrible level of fame though I don't think anyone would want that kind of fame yeah. it's like you can't live you can't do anything you know are, are you because you, you, Koji you must be experiencing so, you know because you're on you're on the come up you're on the rise and I'm not saying you're the <laughs> you're new on the level. David Hasselhoff which you might be soon <laughs> One day. Um, but you must be experiencing some weird stuff from people right now yeah 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 I had um, one scenario where I was in a restaurant um, and the waitress basically tried to take me into a back bit of the restaurant and have her way with me. Oh, wow. She That's gave terrible. me a discount on my food. <laughs> <laughs> she, she actually took her, her break. Yeah. So that way she can come and chill near us when I was eating and stuff, which is weird. Wow. I just write poems, so I find it weird. Wow. <laughs> how do you re- I mean after you've had sex with her how do you react to that scenario <laughs> I'm saying how did you get the discount yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. you something I have to give <laughs> I do what every man does after sex and I cry to myself <laughs> <laughs> totally legit yeah <laughs> <laughs> nah it, it is weird nah there's, there's weird things that do you know what it is? You, it's not even weird you just find yourself in conversations for too long yeah do you know what I mean so a conversation will start with I love this as in I love your project I love mm-hmm. your video I love this and then because that person doesn't want you to walk away they loop that same fact that they just love whatever it is that they've done that. over and over again yeah. and kind of try and add a little bit more detail every time they do they want to be friends yeah and it's kind of like there's only so many times you can say thank you before yeah. you just feel like a dickhead yeah I mean the way that I experience it is like obviously I play a character mm. your music is, is very expressive so they feel like mm. they know you yeah, yeah right yeah, and yeah, which yeah. that's a weird thing as well you know when you meet someone and they know a lot about you, you yeah. with me it's different because I'm playing a character and like I said this is one of the first interviews I've actually done out of character I haven't really ever done because I try and keep the character real yeah. but because of that kind of whatever you want to call it that character that world we've created yeah. when people meet us they expect you know me to be like oh mate it's your body G but because I'm just like a normal guy from Hounslow like you know they they, 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 they don't really know what to say to me so I'm like a massive disappointment I'm massive letdown mm. and I feel bad I'm like I apologise I'm, like, I'm really sorry I'm not do they? Do, are people like do the bit? Do yeah, the well, bit? Well, sometimes when they get really drunk, but that's why it can get a little bit weird because obviously you know Chibadi speaks with an accent. Yeah. So sometimes you get some gurning white bears coming oh. out with bean stains down their top, and they're like, oh, Chibadi body, and I'm like, oh please, bro, do not do an Indian accent right now. Yeah. But like, it's, it's, it's borderline. out. The, 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 yeah, borderline. But the intention is there's no harm in it. It's out of love. They love yeah, it so much. Yeah. I had that just the other day, and the guy was like, I'm your biggest fan. I took a picture. I recorded a video message for him. Mm. All that then the end he was like thank you so much jihadi g 
And I was oh, like, no. Jihadi G. I didn't even correct him. I just went. You just like, sure. And I went, I mean, Jihadi G is a cool name, but it's not my, yeah. <laughs> it's not my name. He sounds you like know? a member of Tupac and the Outlaws. Like, yeah, without Jihadi a doubt. G, yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> Hussein Fadal. Like, yeah, Jihadi, Jihadi G, G. baby, woke up. <laughs> yeah. No, I heard one once. This was the most backhanded compliment ever. There was a guy who was like, oh my God, skeptic. I want a photo. Can I get a photo? And I was like, all right, this is weird. Like, sure. And then we took a photo. And as we were taking the photo, he just whispered in my ear, he goes, you put on a lot of weight since the last time. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what do I say at that point? Do I just walk out of the photo? What happens there? But you know what? That's just that's just weird people, man. <laughs> Backhanded compliments is just. But what was the even? What's the point? It's just why do that? It's a power thing. Nah, it's a power it's thing. It's a power thing. It's because power people want to be your, they want to be your friend, and as soon as they're inside your world. Then they're like, well, I can do whatever I can do whatever I want. Right. Well, we, backhanded compliments is the way. especially when like you know like the people come up. They firstly be like, nah, like yeah, your shows are right, man. They're like, obviously it's like simple, like kind of simple oh. basic. They're obviously like you know you, you you know you kind of he was like you know I'm with me and then 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 it comes out at the end. He goes yeah because the thing is you know, I'm a writer as well and I'm actually doing a little pilot with my and then you're thinking oh here we go oh. it's the bitterness creeping in and you're like without that little bit at the end I would have just been like fair enough it's your opinion but yeah. it's not. It's actually no. it's, it's bitterness coming out. Yeah. It's like yeah. weird backhanded compliments. Like why? Oh, it's life. just weird, man. Yeah, life, you know? yeah, yeah. Do you, do you get do you get poets and rappers doing the same? Um, the, yeah, because people will do it on dumb stuff that I don't care about, and yeah. I think once my expression doesn't change, it was it's kind of disheartening for them. <laughs> but they'll just do like dumb shit. Like I don't. I, I'm basically waiting to be famous enough to not have a Twitter or Instagram account or <laughs> anything yeah. like that. Yeah. So I don't promote my social media handles at all. So mm-hmm. I have like a moderately decent. Yeah. If you like, if you do stuff, kind of following online and mm-hmm. that. And uh, people will try and bring that up as like a thing I should care about. And I'm like, yo, listen, like I could go anywhere, yeah. anywhere and I'm good. No, <laughs> like, yeah, anyway, yeah. you can't do that online. Do you know what I mean? Like, what am I going to do? Oh, I'm safe on Google. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter. Like, I want to be safe from fucking like Hounslow to Peckham to yeah. fucking Scunthorpe or wherever. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> if I want to walk around in my boxes, no one's going to touch me because like, do you know what I mean? Because real life says I'm okay. Mm. Like, do you know what I mean? But then people will always try to be like, oh, like, Oh, Bamboo's a great video. Why does it have a million views? Like, did you watch it a million times? Yeah. Because <laughs> if the answer is no, that, that, is, the sh- <laughs> that is the weirdest background yeah. to compliment it. Yeah, it's like, why doesn't your thing have more? Like, I don't know. How am I supposed to answer that? Yeah, I, I just, I just got life. That's this my answer like, to everything. <laughs> <laughs> that old, that old thing. People get caught thing up on numbers life. and statistics so much. Yeah. We're so yeah. much in that generation where or it's like, like or all the one um how many like your album sales people mm. always want to know. I don't even know my album sales. But you don't want to, because album sales mean they're cool yeah, right now. Man. Man. It's ridiculous. But I purposely didn't find out. Even after it charted, I didn't find out. No. Don't just don't yeah. ever look. I'm never gonna look. Because like you know, I, I said this, I was complaining one time, I think it was like Christmas dinner or something, like I was chatting to my mum and I was like, Oh, you know what? My videos only hit like ten thousand views and like no one really cares. And then she goes, Are you complaining that like ten thousand people, people watched your video? Yeah, like, yeah. You've got to put it into perspective. Yeah, put it in like, perspective. Yeah, That's real. crazy. So yeah. I thought you're right, it's fine. It doesn't matter. But in a way, like with that, it, it does matter, but at the same time it doesn't you have to always remember that things aren't always everyone in this generation wants everything now. Like instant, you know, it's, yeah, it's an yeah. instant gratification yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. Where we want our food now, we want our music now, we mm. want our movies now, we want our love now, yeah. we want our sex I, now. I, I Everything's at a click of a button. Like, yeah. bruv, like our old YouTube stuff, yeah. Like when we put that out, we we got like fucking like two thousand views in like two years. Mm. And this is now. I mean, now we've privated it. It's not online, but it's got millions and millions of views. But that's mm. after Everything a few happens, years, yeah. and we had a surge. It just happens, man. Yeah, it's like um, it's a slow burner. And I think that you know that the slow. What they saw, you know, that saying about the the slow burning candle it lights mm. the longest yeah, it's like you don't want to just be out there yeah. light it and gone yeah. like your video is that's levels like Yo. your video is levels man it takes you know that's effort and like a lot of like same thing with our with our with our art like we we yeah. put fucking time oh, into this yeah. shit so i'm i could i waited that long to create it i wait longer for people to catch on to mm. it as well yeah. just and it will man it will you, you know can't, what I mean? there's no there's no statistics in life for how many times you've heard like lauren hill that thing True. Exactly, you can't. True. You can't. There's not. A, there's nah. no. There's no countable figure on that yep. at all ever in life. And 
I, w- I want the same thing mm. in terms of effect so I'm never bothered but that's the most backhanded that I feel like because the rest of them comment. like I'm too I'm <laughs> too sharp when it comes to sarcasm that yeah. even if a backhanded compliment comes to me I'm like back serving it like tennis I'm like <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see right. that yeah. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. like oh you're skiing now well yeah, yeah. <laughs> bit of chub under the neck but you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, well, fuck it don't like those sure. shoes yeah. sure. <laughs> like, no. and then you're there stuck yeah. in a passive aggressive yeah. argument yeah. for 20 hours yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, walk away and just as you're leaving, just go. What are those? And just, I just, I just keep. What are those? <laughs> what are those? I just keep walking away. Don't look back once. <laughs> I mean, that's a brilliant idea. Yeah, yeah just get great. get quicker. Or just I, like, I think it says more about the person giving the backhanded mm. compliment than it does about you. Yeah, you know, like it's yeah. it's about their insecurities. It's about their weird power thing. Mm. Like, just be happy for someone. What is yeah. it that? And plus, you know what? It always this is like I, have I to be involved. That's why they have to be involved. They have to have this thing. You know, I learned this quite from quite a young age, and I'm happy I learned this. You know, there's two ways you can. There's a few ways, but I think there's two ma- main ways you can react to other people's success, mm. especially mm. people you know. Yeah, it feels like a personal thing. It feels like you were on that journey with yeah, them. Yeah, why yeah. are they up here, and I, why am I still? Struggling? struggling mm. it's two ways you can deal with it you can be a jealous little bitch or you yeah you can be a bit or you can be inspired by that i mean like, look my boy did new. that yeah. like my I, we're from the same ends you know what i mean we, we you know we both Yo, grew up the same way he's doing that thing, i'm yeah. inspired by that you know mm. what i mean exactly. and that's the way if you can if you have that mentality through life yeah. it's mm. always gonna help you just be so, happy for the person so man. my boy my boy friends he's an actor and like he was doing big things from early like mm. yeah i think it was in college when he got his first like major movie role and um, I'm there like going to do exams and stuff like that and he's like I'm seeing pictures of him on set doing like crazy things yeah. and, like our trajectories That's went it. so mm. mad but like in different ways that mm. there was it, it's weird like I feel like if I spent more time focused on why that wasn't happening to me yeah. I would have done less yeah. Yeah. Do you know 100% I mean? yeah. you sit there you start thinking yeah. why why not me What's yeah exactly yeah. but I'm, I'm, I was literally you had to go back into my mind frame and go and actually fuck it like uh, what 10 what ten years not even 10 years like give us like 2 years like I'll just go oh what do you want to meet up in Tunisia real quick just for no reason just fuck it let's go to Tunisia <laughs> yeah. get some ice cream come back and 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 I, 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 I want to be able to do all of that <laughs> sure. stuff and not tweet none of it, yeah, and not Instagram yeah, none of it, not Snapchat yeah, yeah. none of it. I just want to go yeah. and do it. Do you know what I, I, I think. Sure. I mean, I think that's such a. I'm, I'm not at that place yet. I wish I'd be at that place where I can enjoy my life without letting other people know I'm enjoying my yeah. life. Well, that's and I, it's, yeah. it's bad. It means that I'm not content. I think yeah. a lot of people aren't content. Yeah. So you use that social media for validation and be like, I'm here. I'm doing this. Validate me. Yeah. Why? Yeah. But it was like we had like MySpace and MSN. That wasn't like mm. an everyday update thing of what you're doing. I had it was more of a connect on MSN. thing. Huh? I had bare girlfriends. Bro, that's what MSN. MSN was. I was dishing out that love. You see the little love button? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Have your status and that. I like, I like the uh, appearing offline and then appearing online to get her attention. Oh. <laughs> and then be like, and she's like, oh my god, oh, oh my god, are you or, just? Or how much? Yeah. Like- you might, Weird have, you might have another situation on MSN, yeah, and you put your other situation as your display picture because you're trying to wife her up as Whoa. the main thing. Oh, wow. And you've got to tell the other girl that's your cousin or something. Oh, yeah. seen, yeah until, yeah. until they Political. bump into each other. Yeah, then it Whoa. all, yeah. That was real tough. That was hard back in the day. Wow. Uh, ASL love. man ASL <laughs> oh, man. ASL that was the killer ASL if a girl if your girl added you on MSN and said ASL yeah she was about it she that's was, it she, yeah, yeah, yeah. she was yeah, that, cause at that point she, she, was she didn't even know whether you were male or female <laughs> yeah. she yeah. was she about it. your age or your anything like three major details from <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you of age check <laughs> yeah. right, 19 male from Hounslow ready do to you fuck. have a gender <laughs> it's not even like uh, uh, are you male do you have a gender check <laughs> <Do you> <laughs> And Non-specific. how much do I yeah, have yeah. to pay to get to you? <laughs> and back in the day, you could run game for 40... Bus mm. travel was 40p. 40p, yeah, yeah. 40p. But yeah. well, how old are you? 23. 23, that's mad though, because like, I'm 29. Mm. I feel like that's you're young for that that 40p in the MSN generation. Or maybe I'm just... No, man, that's a bad... You, you, know, you know about it though. He was woke from age. You were woke from age. That's five years. So I say your generation, but I don't feel like... Your generation and my generation are that far apart. No, 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 no. It's, yeah. it's like it's when you get me. to the eighteen and the nineteen year olds and you see oh, yeah, babies. Yeah, like, yeah, I know, get confused scary. because like it feels like the I feel like at twenty three, you man might have lived more things than I may have at this point, but then I'm exposed to more things than you guys might have been. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? So 
the the age thing starts to dissipate where Does, yeah. kids Does. are doing mad things. Like, and my my little sister, she's seven years old. Mm. She was on the other day on her on her, my mum's iPad mm. and she was doing a, a vlog and she was going, "Hi guys, okay, make sure." <laughs> she was going, she was going. You know the you know the rhythm they have the vloggers. Yeah. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm like. What? what is going on? And I, you know, I caught her. She was like really embarrassed. She's really shy. And I was just like, that's mad. We wow. had uh, etch a sketch of shit. That was our iPad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, we had mad. chalkboards. That yeah, was our yeah, iPad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's, it's crazy. It's yeah. very interesting. I, I think well, I've met some really like immature 35, 40 year olds that True. haven't experienced life. So I think it's, you know, it's all... It's all re- it is all relative, like, big time. Yeah, you know I, mean? I guess I was just I was doing some mad shit by the age of fucking 13, 14, So you know, I was a good youth though. Mm. Yeah, I didn't drink till eighteen. Wow, yeah. really? Yeah, I was a good youth. Sick. I so how was sick. it the first? So you, you I, see, dr- I don't really oh, remember the first time I had a drink. I drank a WKD and everyone stood around me like I was gonna die. Wow, <laughs> the blue one. The blue the one, yeah, one, of course, yeah. yeah. What other WKDs are there? Like Red this? one, white one. No one really drinks those. It's you drink Smirnoff blue. Ice and Blue WKD. Yeah, it's all about the blue. Wow. Sorry, yeah, I just totally hijacked your story. <laughs> so you drank, you drank a Blue WKD and you became a man. I, wow. I had fornicated before I drank alcohol. Literally that's, that that's day. Deep. That day, yeah. yeah. That's deep. <laughs> no. That's deep. That's a good... Because normally they go hand in hand. They normally yeah. go hand in hand. Yeah, that's a good... Did, that's yeah. a good like, I, <clears throat> that came at 16 yeah yeah that kind of manhood and the second kind of manhood came so, at and no one, you know, at 18 no one got that but okay <laughs> <laughs> see what you did there oh yeah clever <laughs> smart oh yeah oh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, no like, well it's, it's London life you know it's, 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 it's not um, it's not it's not your average kind of like life you know growing up in yeah. London you know you do some weird shit at weird times you know I smoked weed for the first time I was like 11 you know so like, yeah just how? Some weird shit and I can't smoke it what anymore what was I doing I was, I was I just cared about Power Rangers them times so did I I love yeah. Power Rangers I love Power Rangers yeah. yeah I remember doing mad shit so I remember like we were talking about this the other day we smoked a zoo in KFC once back in the day <laughs> in the smoking area we bunk, We were year 9 we bunked school and we, and we, smoked, and we were like you just didn't give a fuck back yeah. then yeah like and it, it was, there was so there was the a smoking area in KFC. KFC. Yeah, of course. Mm. Years later, we're like, mm. did we fucking smoke a zoo in KFC yes, when we were fifteen? They're like, why was there yeah, a smoking? We did. Where where would you put a smoking area in KFC? In KFC. There was a smoking area right at the front in the uh, KFC house the High Street. Wow. If you know, yeah. If you know back then, then you'll know. Yeah, people wow. used to go there. Wow. Yeah, we used to just it's just weird kind of shit they used to do, and you like. I remember when they made it. Like, a li- like I don't know what it was like to smoke inside prior mm. to them making it illegal but I remember the effect of them making it illegal oh, to smoke yeah. inside kicked off mm. yeah that was funny as fuck but I, like, yeah, I, I actually I love like that. going to smoking here when I'm out now I think it's one of the the, the best places to be when that you're is out where sometimes. the magic happens it's, it's, it's a mad few social yeah. positions yeah. that you can actually be social when you're out it's true that's true I, I, um, I remember smoking on planes Oh, that shit. was weird yeah really really weird uh, and when I went to uh, I went to Syria to, to play a show and on the way back they Syrian Airways still allowed people to smoke wow. and this was 2010 hell. on a plane that is so mad in a like pressurised I think, I'd, I think yeah. I'd hate that I'd definitely hate that but I hate flying so it's yeah, like same man what do, you, what do you do when you fly then if you hate it I, I don't know, man. I think music obviously helps a lot. Mm, um, I say Valium. Bruv, we did. We had a... Yeah. <laughs> we had a... <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that would help, definitely. Does anyone really enjoy flying? Like, um, I, I never really... Last time I flew, I fell asleep, woke up in the country I was meant to be in. That's the, yeah, that's the best. I can't sleep that's on perfect. the plane because yeah. just I'm too paranoid. I'm like, if I you just, just wake Just up, in case they need you yeah. to fly the plane. Yeah, exactly. I, but like, get, <laughs> I think weird shit when I get paranoid yeah. about stuff like I feel like someone's going to pee on me. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they do that? <laughs> Why does anyone do anything? <laughs> it could happen, bro. I'm not feeling your yeah. paranoia, but you know what I mean? that's, because, that's why I don't sleep, though. Because, because we're in like a social media age where people do anything for like re-vlogs. Like, if if me and you ever do shows abroad, I promise you that I'll keep an eye out. Please. Yeah. 
Piss for watch. anyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah piss watch. <laughs> See, the thing with me on planes, that I'm also paranoid because I know people are afraid of me on the plane. Yeah, right. So I'm, I'm paranoid of their paranoia. Right. So I'm making sure that I'm extra, extra non-terrorist. But doing that, I'm, I look even more bait. You know what I mean? So I know that I'm going to get pulled by security. Okay, I can deal with that. Yeah. But then when I'm on the plane, I said, I've got a big bag and people are looking. But I've had it all the time. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I get it oh, was it in America? Was it like, was it all fanny pack? And whenever I go to America, it's always peak. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, always get pulled for it. But it's just something you get used to, isn't it? Because like, like, even though like I've got, obviously I, I, I'm, I'm pale as fuck, but with an Arabic last name, I yeah. get pulled aside yeah, you will. every flight, yeah, yeah, yeah. every single flight. I got kept in a room at Was- in Washington DC for two hours, like questioned. And, and the weirdest one was when I was on my way to, um, I think it was like like Thailand or something, or like to, to Malaysia or something. And, and, and I got in Heathrow through security and I went up to the, I could see the plane. I was about to board the plane and these two, like guys in suits came up to me and uh, are you, are you Corin? And I was like, yeah. How did they even know that? And they go, we got your name on on our list. Oh my god! And I looked over the list and it was just my name. <laughs> and I was like, That's, <laughs> sorry, mate. I think a list is more than one name. Yeah, exactly. And um, and they're like, yeah, we have to search you again. And I was like, okay, sure. So I had to look through my stuff. And then uh, and they go, uh, are you Muslim? And I went, nah. And they go. Uh, are you Arabic? And I went, well, you know, it's like my dad's side of the family, whatever, and Arabic last name. And he goes, okay, cool. Do you speak Arabic? And I went, nah. Oh, and then man. this white guy spoke to me in Arabic as if to catch me out. And I went, bruv, I have no idea what you're saying. Oh, and he went, all right, cool. And then he left me alone. Didn't even search my oh, bag. Bruv, they don't fuck about out there, man. Mad. That was in England. Oh, That's mental. Oh, I had it. So they, said, they went through my stuff and I had this, um, my barber's in, in Hounslow, his, 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 his name's Al Wasam. And it's like, you know, that sounds a little bit terroristy, doesn't it? And they pulled out the thing and they went, who is Al Wasam? And I was like, I was like, it's my boy from Hamza West. He can't, like, like, and they were like, where does he live? And I'm like, fucking hell. Where does he live? I mean, Man. it's on the business card. Yeah. You can and see where he lives. This is on the card. That's they probably that looks dangerous, yeah. Yeah, like, that's, yeah that's exactly. Sus. But yeah, no, it's oh terrible, man. That was fucking sus. But you know what? It's like the only world that I've known. It's a post 9-11 world, isn't it? Like, because when 9-11 happened, we were kids. So yeah. I've, as an adult, I I've only I lived in a post 9-11 world. So I've always been used exactly. to that. Yeah. I think it's, I was in Ghana really, but Yeah, it's, it's just... Wow. I think. On holiday. Something like that, yeah. Do you everyone remembers where they were. Well, you were in... I think I was in Ghana, yeah. Okay. Do you remember what the reaction was like? It was kind of, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, like, oh, look at that! that. Might make it long to get home. I remember I was in I was in college at, uh, in King's Cross. I, remember I, was, I was in a philosophy class studying mm, as it. you do. Yeah. Da- David Hume, who was a philosopher, you know what I mean? Yeah. Philosophizing, oh. <laughs> and uh, and I used to wear turtlenecks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I remember getting a text from my mate just saying, "Yo, this sh- shit has happened." And I remember like, having this weird, like, kind of like Dawson's Creek kind of moment of, 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 of <laughs> you know, going, oh my God, right now I'm living in a world that the rest of this class aren't currently living in because they don't know that this has happened. Yeah. And I looked around at their faces. Weird power. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, wow. <laughs> Did you know what you should have done at that moment? You said, fuck it. Yeah. Guys, guys, I can't what? take this <laughs> anymore. You know what's jokes here? Yeah? Like, because you know, it's that thing everyone remembers where they were on 9 yeah. 11. I wrote this script at uni, yeah, which was called Where, where Were You? Mm. That's what it's called, and it's just about and it's about my real life story. What, ha- what happened to me on 9-11 okay. My boy got jacked, yeah, for his phone. It's thirty three ten, yeah. He got jacked, Man. and it was, it was like, but it was like by ten Somali oh, guys, yeah, no more. in Hounslow West, yeah. And I remember they were they were like, you know, then he called his brothers, and we found the guys, and we got them. We we're in this state. We we're all, you know, we we're gonna. We, they, his brothers were like searching all the boys' pockets for to get his phone back. All of a sudden, some little Ute just ran out, and he went, "Someone just blew up the White House," and it was like obviously very wrong, <laughs> wrong information. But then it was like everyone just stopped though. Everyone just stopped and we went to this shop, like people who've just jacked us. And we went to the shop and we were just watching the news and literally everyone just like frozen. Like they gave the stuff back. They could we didn't find the phone, man. It was I remember my, the, the, his older brother who was quite religious, he left him with a little thing and he was like, just remember, he goes, Allah is watching. And I was like, fucking hell, bro. <laughs> so intense. <laughs> For thirty three ten, I was like, it's like you know, wow. but yeah, that's why that was my nine eleven wow. experience, bro. But it was weird. The microcosm, you know, oh, the man. like 
Man, but that you know what? I remember literally it was heart. the effect was so quick that like, literally a week after, and in the script, that's what I wrote it's about this mm-hmm. girl he likes and he's had a he had a rap battle in school, he impresses her, then 9-11 happens, his mate gets jacked. Yeah. Then literally the next day he goes into school and the same girl, this white girl that he yeah. was trying to chirp, she's well, now yeah. won't even she don't even speak to him oh, now. Geez. Because they you know they release so that it was right, the Arabs yeah, who did yeah. and it was it like that it wasn't in real life, it wasn't for so many people. Because oh, oh, before peak. that, when you think terrorists, what do you think? Before um, 9-11 like, I I Island, IRA. If it's Die Hard Then it's Russians Russians yeah. IRA you can't, or like Timoth- Anyone can be Timothy, a terrorist Timothy McVeigh, Timothy McVeigh, McVeigh like, They're Christian Right wing oh, no, like, they, are, they have mental health problems yeah, Exactly they're not If it's terrorists. white yeah, 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 Then they're, they're, they're not, not terrorists like it's, it's Yeah he just He broke up with his girlfriend It's not terrorism It's normal His dad didn't hug him enough Don't put him in jail Yeah yeah exactly Just give him a talk show But I mean It was literally like The the effect of it was Instantaneous to a point where I remember I didn't go on the train after you know the seven the, uh, after the seven other bombings and um the uh the brazilian dude who got shot yeah on the uh, underground Men- Menendez, from uh, fuck uh, yeah. me yeah he got shot like nine ten times yeah that was and fun. i didn't go on the, the tube for like yeah i don't know like a few weeks or so just got yeah. shook uh, after yeah. that i was like what if i'm running to get a thing and then this yeah. happens and that happens and it was just like man because people were trigger happy like mate they were just like you know and we're lucky we don't live in america because that shit you'd be always be paranoid with mad, that kind of yeah. stuff and you don't even have to be anything you can just be look any su- reason you know what i mean mm. it's just like but yeah i mean they're just was, so ready in america it's ready, anything. man. It's a, I mean, that's when everyone has guns. That's what it is. It's fear, isn't it? Give everyone guns, put yeah, paranoia into the system, exactly. and it's like, you know, you don't trust anyone, you're suspicious. It's a horrible, horrible environment. That's why yep. I'm kind of happy sometimes I live in, you know, that we live in London because we haven't yeah. really got that, thank, thankfully. We've got it to Just a level. To stop, yeah, stop and We're even a little madness. bit more passive yeah. about racism. Do you think so? Yeah. Like, in what way? Like, If any person that's, like, major famous in Britain was to be publicised in a way that made them look like a racist, the backlash would be instantaneous. And in a weird way, we, 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 you would argue, we have much more freedom of speech here. Like, Mm. we're more... We, but then at the same time, like you said, the the backlash to anything, if anyone fucks yeah. up, it's like, no, 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 we need to make sure yeah. that what they said was wrong and they yeah. need to but pay for it. But there's certain people that are immune to this, like, you know, eating people or like, you know, supremely who's, upper class Who's folk. eating people? <laughs> <laughs> who's eating people? <laughs> Stop eating me. <laughs> no, but anyone yeah. that went, anyone that that upper class, <laughs> kind of anyone that's upper hierarchy. class that went to eating oh, okay. or if you're a Tory, you're totally immune from this. You could do whatever you want if, if say, if you're a Tory. Yeah, but then fuck them. They fuck don't him. come to ends. <laughs> <laughs> David Cameron hates to mend them. Yeah. It's true. Um, <laughs> so, Koji, the question I wanted to ask you is you had 23 winners yeah. uh, come out very recently, um, which is fucking sick, man. Yay. I mean, it's just, it's too, it's too good. And like, this is not just me blowing smoke, but like, this yeah. is it's obviously Kwame and Kruma. Big tune. And that tune is so sick. And especially like when I DJ for Koji, that is like so much fun to mm. do mm. because it's such a like, mm. you know, the, the, the beat is incredible. Like the production's incredible, like obvi- yeah. obviously. Yeah. It's stripped back and you do this thing where you start like, and you do it live as well. And I, I try and tell people this when I describe your music, where you can sit back and you're with the beat, you're with the beat. And then all of a sudden with your voice, mm. you're just like, even though the beat isn't gotten that, hasn't got that much more aggy, mm you feel like you want to fight somebody. Yeah. yeah because yeah, you're yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, you know, like, fuck fucking hell, fuck. And um, that's, you know, that's what's fucking great about Kwame and Krumah is that the chorus comes in, you know, like, you know, everyone wants to be Tony Montana and like, mm. you want to be Kwame and Krumah. And that's, and that is such a, a poignant, you know, the poignant chorus. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't remember what I was, oh yeah, I did. Right, so 23 Winners mm-hmm. came out and the thing that I absolutely love that I wanted to ask you about and talk to you about on, um, on the podcast is that, uh, have you explained, is, you, you, your dad hadn't heard your music no and then you put up a tweet when 23 Winners came out and it charted and did mm-hmm. incredibly well you put up a tweet uh, of two photos of your dad mm-hmm. in concentration mm-hmm. very very moving photos of your dad just listening to your album for the first time mm-hmm. so tell me a little bit about wow. that. Ugh, that I've got a drink for that, that was, <laughs> that was it was incredible um, right so 23 Winners is my EP that turned into a bit more of an album project once it came out. And on that project, um, the whole kind of narrative of the project is based around a conversation I have with my dad um, and the duality of both our lives, speaking on how he came from Ghana and over here and how he had to... He came from Ghana to over here and how he had to adjust and all the things he kind of encountered and things he saw and 
certain historical moments for him and then throughout the music I'm talking more so about my experiences um, and that whole that whole thing that whole process was weird because it was like my dad was becoming more aware that I made music but I think for him he's always just kind of trusted in the fact that I'll be okay mm. so he's never really forced me to do anything do you know what I mean he's just kind of like anytime you ask me a question like so like how is this going and I always tell him it's going well and I can name things that kind of prove that it's going well but a lot of the time it flies over his head and it doesn't matter to him so I had like a whole summer period where I was just doing mad things. Mad things were happening for me. Like mm. first TV spot, yep. first tour and all that kind of stuff. And I come back and um, I told my dad and it was just like, <sighs> like he didn't understand none of it. Yep. Like none of the things that I was no, naming. No context. Yeah, yeah, he just had no recollection of it. So he was like, I don't, yeah, cool. I think once he listened to, he listened to one other record. It was the first version of Kwame and Krumah. Right. And after he heard that record, he said, yeah, I'm proud of you. And so, I was like, okay, cool. I know what I need to do. Yeah. So I had a whole other project that I scrapped and I made this project. Oh, wow. So, and that was the only record he had heard from him. So mm. everything's been done. It's come out. Um, and it'd been out for maybe a week before I played it to him. Mm. And um, the day I was going to play it to him was the day it was coming out on iTunes. And the night before, I was just depressed. I don't know why. I was just sad. I don't. I just thought oh, it's, it's so normal when a record comes yeah, out for you to feel alone. I just thought, yeah. oh, like, have I done enough? Like, mm. because I'm not signed. I don't have mountains and mountains of PR posters of me on everywhere. I'm not gonna come on after fucking Coronation Street with like out now on a wall ass advert and nothing mm. like that. Like, I'm from ends in it. I've got Instagram. I've got Twitter. I've got me. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So, Standard. Yeah, so I was like, all right, cool, whatever happens, happens. But I didn't, it was nerve wracking to be in a space where people could judge you publicly and say, oh, well, he didn't do this or he didn't do this, he didn't do that. So I was like, Do you know, if people want the music, they can have it. So we put it out. And I remember after like 20 minutes, it went to like number 25 in the charts or whatever. In the hip-hop and that's charts, the oh, hip hop charts. In yeah, the hip hop yeah. charts. And I was like, is this normal? I kept asking people, like, what does this even mean? So I thought, bun it, I don't understand it, so I don't care. Mm. So then I, I was like, okay, cool, I'm going to go play my music to my dad. So I've, I've jumped on the train. Um, this is maybe an hour now. It's, about, it's been out for about an hour. Jumped on the train from Hoxton to Caledonia Road. Gone to my dad's house, sitting in there. And I think as of just before I got to his house, because his house doesn't really have that much reception, I checked it. And I think it was on like number nine in the hip-hop charts. So I'm like, Whoa. I kept going... Um, all right, fuck it. I don't get it, but I feel like this is a mad thing, but I'm just going to leave it as that. Yep. Then um, I played it to him. Now, I've gone there and done the small talk and that. Sat down, he sat down, put the headphones on him, and he just sat in almost like a praying position. The album is 45 minutes. He didn't move. Wow. Like, he, so, didn't, wow. he did not move once. And I stared at him for 45 minutes because I, <laughs> I could hear the, the, the rest of the music the yeah. kind of excess from yeah. the headphones so I'm like I know what part you're at yeah. this is a vibe you should be, <laughs> yeah, you should be, you know you should be on a on? million right now you crazy <laughs> did a move just yeah. sat still and I think do you know what I realised yeah, is that he only cared about what I was saying mm-hmm. like from, the lyrics yeah from yeah. top to bottom he cared about what I was saying and, and and for me it was exciting to know that he could come out the other side knowing I did not chat shit once yeah do you know what I'm saying like everything yeah. I said on that record is factual like from from talking about like um, from ends and, and the cycle of being a part of street life to the mm-hmm. fact that um, my dad was a member of the CPP which was a uh, Ghanaian government political kind of like people party mm-hmm. around the same time that Kwame Nkrumah was kind of trying to become president but like it, Every time I'd go see him, he'd tell me about Kwame Nkrumah, and I had no, I wasn't really that like in tune with my own culture. So I'm going, who is my man? Do you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And every time he's talking about, it, I'm going back and doing research, and I'm going, raw oh, like this story is a mad thing. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, this is this is a whole country's independence. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and he he battled for it, and even after he became president, there was still kind of like a. That that whole I, I like to think of it as a crabs in a bucket effect, where even though he was in a position where he could make certain decisions, certain things pulled him down, mm. and he didn't even end up dying in Ghana. Do you mm. know what I'm saying? So he didn't die the heroic, celebrated champion. Mm. It, it was still a kind of like a mixed and matched story, which is maybe why it's not told more. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? But then I'm thinking, bro, what is being fucking? 
put out in music. Yeah. Mm. Everyone wants to be Hefe, everyone wants to be yeah. like, do you know what I'm saying? And tote guns and do all that stuff, bruv. More time, mm. if a gun was in your face, you'd shit yourself, innit? Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. like, Tony Montana's not about just wearing nice shit and having a nice watch and wearing Balenciagas and all that kind of stuff, like, do you know what I'm saying? You've got to yeah. be about it. Exactly. Trips up to cunch don't mean you're a fucking drug no, But people forget how Scarface ended. Like, people, yeah, yeah. Bro, people, people reference Scarface, right? He's probably the most, referenced, the most referenced movie of all yeah. time in hip hop. Yeah. yeah. People forget what the fucking message was. Yeah. And, a man and, dying on the blimp, world is yours. There's a fucking message yeah. there, man. Yeah. And the you that, can't, there's only true. two ways it's going to end in that it's life. True. I completely get the, the understanding of why that that kind of character yeah, would be of course yeah. do you know what I mean alluring to people but then at the same time I'm like my thing is this it's not even just about Ghana innit like mm. big up Ghana when when that song come out um, Ghana was basically what is it 59 years independent I need to double check that but it was a mad thing if mm. it's not 59 years and it's less than that or it's more than that Skip to gave me rum. <laughs> so, I'll edit it out. Don't worry. Either way, yeah. I'll, I'll put a voiceover of the exact. Yeah. It'd be like Ghana was fifty-four one. years. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, it was more so about like whatever, wherever you're from. Mm. If there's somebody that you can look towards and understand and. and and sonically project their story within yourself and and maybe not even try and like completely emulate but the 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 ideas of resilience perseverance forward thinking mm-hmm. pushing all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. if there's somebody within your culture that you can champion then yep. say it with your chest be yeah. like do you know what i mean like, yeah. i remember having to be shook like when a supply teacher come in and i was shook they couldn't read my name so the class was gonna laugh at me. Mm. fuck that my yeah, nuts are big I'm beautiful allow me it's, it's true <laughs> <laughs> bro but it's like the name, the name of your like, next record you're like not even knowing about your own culture it's sad because you yeah. grow up and we don't in school we don't know obviously anything about mm-hmm. that we don't know about World War 2 and all that shit yeah. and it's just like you know you as you get older you know like I think your mom well, for me my thirst of knowledge mm. becomes more mm. and more like when I was younger I don't want to know I don't want to do it's that it's possible because your family aren't cool like you, when you think yeah. about your parents it's you're like, not you, you, it's as, not, a, yeah. as a kid you're like oh well it's just your parent you know I'm not they're annoying you know I, th- I think about like the stuff that my granddad did you know he was in, yeah. he was in the free French you know he fought, he fought the Nazi he was a, he escaped from Tunisia to, jo- to join uh, to join uh, the for- French Foreign Legion so, at 15 years old and you're like Wow, this guy they, They've lived, bro they've, yeah. They have lived lives Crazy like, I think it's something That you should reach The same thing with my gran as well Like her story And, you know, like my, Even just my mum And my dad's story I mean, this shit They've been through Is just so mad mm. They had to go mm. through that And it's, mm. it's, it's weird Being a first generation Second generation mm. person Like, we yeah. understand How young our history is In this In our story And mm. the more and more The generations go The more you lose your culture and your story and that's why it's great going back and finding those stories and embracing and turning it into something artistic putting it into perspective is is something beautiful Mm. like even like the Chibadi G character he's a comedy character but it's it's based on my dad and my uncle and the Mm. the guys like you know the Brits who came here and they were just hustlers they were Del Boys the adjustment they had to make to become adapted to the culture that they were now there's a lot of comedy in that but if you, you know, when you watch people just do nothing, a lot of people feel sorry for Chibadi because he's a tragic character. And, and yeah. comedy and tragedy are like very thin yeah, lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the end of the day, Chibadi's is just an optimist. Yeah. He's a hustler, he's an optimist. Yeah. Yeah. He, like, you know, he even says, he's one of his, like one of the first lines I ever wrote with Chibadi G. He goes, um, look at me, I came here in 93 with nothing but five pound on my brother's passport, uh, my passport. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, there's, there's comedy in that, yeah. but it's a true story. Yeah. My, my dad came here yeah. In like whatever you know, eighty two, eighty three, or whatever, and he had five pounds to his name. Mm. You know what I mean? Like five mm. pounds to his name. And it's just like that, and obviously you turn it into a joke, and yeah. you think there's a but there's pain in yeah. that. You make it happen. There, you there's make pain it in flip, that. Like, you, they fucking made it happen, bro. And it's just, just like I like beautiful. to think the project done well because it was real. Yeah. Because if it can invoke and spark conversations like this, then there must be some truth. Yeah, of in course. The story. Yeah, Especially yeah, if your exactly. dad was like listening and you were talking about validation from social media and all that. That yeah. kind of validation is priceless. Mm. Yeah. Something from imagine, your time. You know what so I mean? Big time. Imagine that like, boom. So I played on project forty five minutes, watched him, mm. he sat still, yeah. He takes the headphones off and he says something mad to me. He said, I'm proud of it. Nobody knows what happens with life and maybe this could be the start of something like big basically mm, mm. and that was so weird yeah. do you know what I mean that was so weird because it's like rah you've just heard my music for the mm. first time and 
And like me and my dad had a uh, one of those weird relationships, but like we could always tell we was in sync, even the times that we were apart. Mm. And now you're kind of like, this is you've listened to the thing that I'm telling you. This is me. Like mm. if I took him to my workplace, do you know what I mean, and that kind of stuff. Like I just put him in some headphones. That's my workplace. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And he's like, yeah, this could be the start of something. And Sick. and legit, I checked my phone right after that, and I was like, Dad, I'm number five. In the charts, and he was like, uh, "That's good. That's very good." Like, cause he, I, it goes back to that understanding of things. Yeah, like back he then, context. he still had charts. Do you know what I'm saying? So he understands. Relate oh, to that. He can yeah, relate yeah, to that. He's yeah, like, "Whoa, yeah. okay, cool. That must mean something." Yeah. Woke up the next day. Me thinking this ain't normal, so it's gonna drop. Yeah. Went to number three. Like jumped over Kendrick or something like that. Stayed at number normal. three for a while. St- and then um, obviously normal. Bust into the like the um, the top forty. Yeah. And then the whole time. I'm not doing nothing but Instagramming. I'm just going, I'm look at this. Like, do you know what I mean? I had one video where I was just like, um, uh, like, um, mom, yes, I'm number three. Oh, that's good. <laughs> 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 like, do you know what I mean? It was just that real. Like, it was just kind of like, so real. I was in my yard. So like, real. I didn't do nothing. It's completely natural. So, Great. that's the best way, bro. I, I yeah. mean, we, we, the same thing where we don't, we, we've never really been like forcing. The mm. show down people. Mm. It's, a, it's a word of mouth show. You can't do it. You yeah. watch it. You tell your friends. They tell their friends. It's, it's, mm. it, it that's the thing about people just do nothing. It's so. I mean, I, I could speak personally, but I know every, a lot of people feel exactly the same ways. Is that we experienced pirate radio? Oh man, people. Yeah, of course. You, we we grew yeah. up. You know, I grew up listening to Heartless in school. Like you, we know what this is. You know that. Yeah. And so to to hear that is so real. It's very to real. see people just we all lived it. Like, it? We all, yeah. we all we all MCs. We all used to do that shit. But you know what? It comes down to like on the surface of it it's a pirate mm. radio show mm. about old school garage and but really like on the core of it what it's about which i think a lot of great comedy is about mm. is a delusional characters yeah. you know <laughs> it, which is someone who thinks they're up here but really they're not yeah. but the, the beauty of all of it is that they're not bitter mm. what they are they're content in their in their own little shitty mm-hmm. world so like you know he's got he's got his little boys there who are who are, who are hyping him up he's the best mc in the galaxy yeah mc grinders he he thinks he is the best mc yeah, in the galaxy chabuddy thinks he's a ladies man entrepreneur he thinks that in his is. world he is you don't get him <laughs> yeah you in his world him, you know what i mean in his world Freddy he is. B. Yeah. and that's funny Honey. because you know like <laughs> so, yeah, watching someone delusional and the confidence that someone says something yeah, yeah, that yeah. Like, i'm sick what are you on about you're like yeah. wow like that delusion is always funny word of mouth is imperative man like, oh man 100%. my whole my whole thing is like put the art back in the hands of the people mm. do you know what i'm saying the, I, how i even i remember the first time i even came into to knowledge about your show is after um roll safe that's so, a mad one yeah roll safe so roll safe's come out my boy he's a proper like he, he writes comedies into it yeah. so he's like yo you need to check this out so i watched the roll safe thing and he's like yeah, he's inspired by people who just do nothing. And I'm mm. like, oh, what's that? Da, 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 da. And he showed me a clip. Mm. So this is why when you showed me the clip again, yeah, yeah, yeah. I recognised yeah. it. And I was like, Where, how did I Seen put it. two and two together? But it's that, that cycle of inspiration. If something comes 100%. out and it's real, mm. it goes on to create other great things. And that's yeah. what we, uh, personally, just speaking, my, I'm so proud of the role mm. safe yeah. thing. Mm. Because he came out and he said he was inspired by people just do nothing. And, um, you know, he even hollered us before he did it. He mm. just hollered us and said, you know, he showed love. And then, to see that he's come up the same way you know what yeah. I mean he's you know he, but he's about his acting like he went to drama school but he yeah. used YouTube and he's he's fucking amazing you know what yeah. I mean and we we love that to see that that's that's what we we are spawning yeah, and yeah, oh, we only want more forward. of it because it's inspirational yeah exactly like, we only started what like this is our third series and we've you know we've reached heights now which mm. we wouldn't have never dreamed of and yeah. he's going to do the same and yeah, then whoever's exactly. inspired of that that's mm. going to happen exactly. and that is a great thing you know and and so yeah, all that, the money that. forget all the fame the hype if you can actually inspire people to create this mm. art whether, whatever it is music comedy film yeah. it's moving our culture forward yeah. and there's like guys from you know Trust London me. people didn't really Man, expect it's, much it's, of exactly. us we didn't, weren't given the same opportunities people mm. had we yeah. had to work a bit harder you know just right. from my own mm. point of view I had to work double hard you yeah, know what I mean to get where I am Mm-hmm. So if I'm inspiring people to do that, then that's that's more that's than it. and that's yeah, and that's you know the cult, I mean? that's a culture insp- of inspiration that is it's very beautiful. It's a very beautiful time for it, and it's a beautiful moment for to have a piss break because I feel like yeah. this is is exactly <laughs> that moment. Yeah, yeah. Welcome back to the Thanks for Trying podcast, Fuck David uh, Cameron. Allegedly, <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> yeah. Um, welcome back, and um, yeah, I've, I, we've had a piss break. And also, I didn't pee. 
<laughs> Allegedly, we've had a piss break. Um, and at this point, the tradition, the thanks for trying tradition of doing a shot. Actually, I didn't even hand you oh, nice one. the things. These are our special shot mugs very that nice. I do every time. They're very floral and very mm. nice. Um, and also to big up the sponsor of this episode, which is Red Leg Rum, which is actually really delicious. Spiced rum. Yeah, it's nice, mm. man. It's really good. So Tasty. big up Red Leg uh, and shout out to Poppy at High Spirits for... Uh, hooking up so big up yourselves and um, yeah cheers to Koji and Asim for coming through uh, cheers brother cheers cheers alright alright spicy spicy jazz delicious <laughs> it tastes like jazz jazz, <laughs> jazz. Yeah. Um, so we were just in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the piss break we were talking about the, the thing which unites us which is rap yeah and uh, more specifically Drake <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're gonna get me. Hey, it's, well, man, it's got us to... talking though. Like you know, it's, it's, got, a, yeah. it's a talking point. Though. Everyone's got a, everyone's got a, 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 an opinion about Drake, you know, yeah. big time. And uh, I don't, I don't mind. I really like, you Same. know, because you, you think you could do an. Someone said this to me other day. You, I could do an entire set, a DJ set in a club, just playing Drake records. Easy, easy, mm. and it and would bang. It would bang. Yeah, hundred you know? percent. It would. So you're like, I can't be mad at that. No. Like I'm, you know. In fact, I'm the opposite. I'm quite pleased. Please makes life easier. Yeah, yeah. But you know, he, he's he's got a lane. He's playing his lane. Mm. Big that, up Drake. That, that's what it is, bro. It's about you know you're moist, and you know you want to. <laughs> no, 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 no. But what I was saying, it's the moisture. Yeah, I, I expected moisture, high levels of moisture, and that's what oh, I got. Yes. And I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't pissed at it. I was, uh, you know. But at the same time, and, like, and we're talking saying, about views. We're talking, talking about, about the views. New album. Yeah, okay. I'm talking about views. And I think you know, I think it's tough, like, for anything to say two years yeah this is my album coming out it's the expectation it's like almost impossible to live up to mm. you know what I mean like it's nah, like man, not like, your Drake level man no but I don't think he's that kind of artist though I think if Kendrick said I'm gonna make an album that's gonna come out in two years he would deliver and it would be a fucking cinematic masterpiece poetic beautiful because even Untitled Unmastered which was oh, far away songs was brilliant, just like brilliant yeah it was crazy like, mm. it was beautiful and um, no I just think yeah I, I just think as a progression as an artist I don't think there, it was it was what I kind of expect I like yeah. the theme I heard I read later that he had a loose theme to the album about summer and winter and like you know the summer tunes are like I mean that's, dance that's definitely that. not a theme that's just uh, going through yeah. the seasons that's probably yeah well that's kind of what he was saying <laughs> but yeah, it was quite vague because he was like it starts off in the winter then it's summer and then it's back to winter and I was like <laughs> All right, like that's yeah. more like he did the album. He's like, we need a theme for this shit. My yeah. theme is like, to have the songs go like sequentially through one to twenty. Yeah, that's yeah. my theme. It's not yeah. like how yeah, it's not like how Kendrick could break down to Pimp a Butterfly or yeah, like you yeah. know like an MF Doom yeah, like food album, and you break it down. Mm. You're like, fucking how this guy put some. Yeah, he he had a plan. It was for what, this. It was the best stuff on the hard drive. Yeah, you think so? Our album cover was one of the worst drink. album covers I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. Terrible album I just, cover. I mean, also it, theoretically, it's not even possible. No, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just looking at it from like, I'm just, I'm just looking at it from the standpoint of someone, you know, I'm a bit afraid of heights. So yeah. I look at that and I'm like, there's no way if I'm afraid of heights that Drake is not afraid of heights. Yeah, he's moist. He's, he's definitely if, afraid of heights. If, if, if he's afraid of heights, he's not sitting on the but, top. Hold, can let me ask you a question though. You know, like everyone's like saying that he's like, you know, we were saying earlier about like the whole trying to beg the the UK mm. roadman culture or whatever. Yeah? Mm. yeah, like we see it as, as people from London. We see that he's yeah. got the fade. He's got the stony. Yeah. It's very London, and he's on the mm. grind. He's coming up with sexual boys and yeah. scared. I would say yes, he is influenced by that. But I would also like I think people forget that he's Canadian and in mm. Canada. Like I, went, I was in Canada in 2009, yeah. and we were like with the locals. We went to house parties and that. And bro, they always they speak pretty much the same slang as us. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. culture that patois influence is heavy out there. Yeah. So I was out there saying safe and seen and yeah, all that kind. Of, I, I didn't have to. I was in, when I went back to New York. I had to curb it. They were like, bro, like you know, what safe? What do you mean safe? Yeah. Seen? Like what does that mean? It's just like I had to watch what I was saying because yeah, it was yeah. like. But they yeah. they speak the same. There's, kind there's of so of many similarities. Well. Yeah, so, so many similarities well. of Canada because it is you know the the Queen influence. All, yeah, you know man. all that stuff. Also, as a total side note, is that I have a weird obsession with for me the greatest tv show of all time what, trailer mean, park no 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 oh, it's oh, even wow. deeper than that go on and people that know me will know this already is it the grassy no it's a tv show <laughs> uh called juice south 
Oh, you know, I've never seen that. Is that that right? It's not porn. It's not porn. (laughs) It's basically about uh, a member of the Canadian Mountain Police uh, called Benton Frazier, not to be confused with Brendan Frazier, as a lot of people do. Yeah. Uh, The character is called... (laughs) Just did it. Uh, The character is called Benton Frazier, Canadian Mountain Police. He's a mountie in full mountie garb. uh, That his dad gets murdered at the beginning of this, the, the, you know, the series, right? And he goes to, he travels to America, to Chicago, on the trail of the killers of his father, right? And that's the a premise. Comedy? What is it? It's a kind of, it's a comedy. comedy. It's a dark comedy. Okay. And, it's, and then he links up with this, a, a member of the Chicago police, a mm. tough-talking policeman called Ray Vecchio, okay? And so the entire show is like the fish out of water, the Ben and Fraser of Canadian Mountain Police mm. with his deaf dog, Diefenbaker, and together they solve crimes, okay? okay? Now, this show was my favorite show of all time. I've got every episode on DVD. I'm a little bit obsessed with it. I love this show, okay? Now, what comes, brings you back to Drake <laughs> is that no one else apart from the UK, not even the UK, Eng- the England market, because it was shown on BBC Two, and Canada has any idea what the fuck this show is. Americans have no idea. Mm. Like, it was shot in Chicago. Like, Kirsten Dunst was in the episode. Like, the shit was, you know, it was a sick show, but no mm. one knows. Yeah. And somehow that relates back to the fact that we... <laughs> <laughs> Canada and UK I'll check it out. It's high praise. You need to check it. It's check incredible. It yeah. So, so I've good. I've heard of Juice. I've the I, name. I, I wanted more. Sorry. I wanted more from Views. Oh, I thought you meant from Juice South. But more tracks. I had 20. Oh, you mean more in general? More I, I, I wanted 40. I wanted 50 tracks. <laughs> what, more passion? More like... I, I don't know. I thought, yeah, because this is a hip-hop conversation. Hmm. I thought he batted up me, can it? Yeah, I thought, yeah, cool. You had him up. He did. He done him. He done him over, yeah. But... Realistically, all Meek wanted people to focus on is that Drake don't write his bars. Yeah. Which was exposed... Which was exposed. Mm, mm. So when you listen to views, yeah, oh, bro, you're right. I personally didn't like after actually all of that coming out. I thought, right, am I even hearing Drake anymore? Yeah, bro, and, for real. I was and thinking I'm going, that the other day. Oh, wait a minute. No, I'm not because realistically, you can hear what he's doing in the acts he puts on. Yeah, mm. do you see what I'm saying? So it feels like he'll put on an act like he'll put on like an artist and be like yeah cool here's a free ball I'm Drake so I'm gonna lift your career and it's gonna be yeah. a thing. but then at the same time he starts mimicking the way they speak or the yeah. way they rap or the way they do certain well, things even they boom. sing with like Party Next Door, Door Weekend they ghost stuff. right for him yeah. too yeah. Yeah. Bro, but I heard just saying that sorry yesterday I heard one of my favourite Drake songs is Legend Right. I just love that song I like mm. the build up yeah. of it I like the progression I like the way it drops mm. that feeling it gives you it's quite euphoric it's quite yeah. and then I heard the reference track party, it's a party next door tune isn't it oh, no. and I heard the ref- wow. bruv bruv like every that. bar every melody and it's like and I love that song because yeah, I'm, sing- I'm thinking of myself like if I die now I'm a legend like, <laughs> on my ego shit you know what I mean it, it inflates your ego like yeah, that but course, that's good it pumps course. you up yeah, and I'm thinking yeah. that's such a personable track because it's true Drake dies today mm-hmm. he's a legend mm-hmm. it's true so, but, so how, how, how much it. do you think then the, the ghost writing takes away from your uh, uh, you connecting to an artist it's what you were saying bro. it was like I, when I listened to that I kind of think I'm Plus, he's like, like, you know, he's doing a little bit of patois, doing a bit of his rude boy mm. dance sort of thing. That's not Drake. But mm. then what is Drake? Is Drake the Atlanta thing? Is that him? Or is yeah. it the Canadian middle class guy? He just so... I, I feel like... He, he didn't start to, from the bottom. He's a great but, but this, is, this is the jokes thing, though. Is that I don't know who he is. This yeah. is the only time... I don't know who you are, Drake. This is the only time he's done it this fucking bait, though. Yeah. Maybe just to us, because he's come over here this time. But mm. realistically, if you think about every Drake album, he starts talking about how a specific city has influenced his sound. Mm -hmm. There was that whole Houston period where he was slowing down everything Mm -hmm. and he was chopping up and all that kind of stuff and boom, boom, boom. And he tried to carry it through. But this is the first time to me it felt like, rah, I can see what you're doing, B. Also, because when I heard him say the words Pon Road on the album, (laughs) I was like... It, it, oh, even when, when he, he says cheese yeah oh, no, did he do that yeah, no cringe. he didn't oh, I cringed at that I cringed yeah, he went no, he didn't yeah, yeah. I cringed I when he said that, that yeah, yeah, point. Yeah. oh my god so he's but been you, listening to gigs but, non-stop but here's oh, the thing though he is a businessman wow. and he's putting together product that's yeah. how I see it now he's a manufactured 
like mm. kind of brand. Yeah. You know, like, you know, brand gets thrown around. He is the, what you would call a brand because yeah. he's getting all these writers, all like the best guys from Canada, really, isn't it? Mm. Like, and even in Mary, the ghost mm. writers, but like the, 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 the ghost writers he has for this album, you can just see that, you know, he said, I want this and I want that feeling. Mm. And, but, bro, it really did disappoint me when I heard that reference track because I was like, it was like every bar, like even the rap, them. even the rap bit, even the like, because, you know, Party Next Door raps as well, but it's like kind of sing, yeah. sing stuff. But even like the chorus, the way he dropped, everything, the beat. Man. It makes me. It makes me think, Rob. What is like? I guess my generation per se want from music anymore. Mm. Because I remember like coming, like even as a youth, if I like my favorite rappers, I needed to know they could bar mm. as themselves mm. on anything yeah. at any time. Do you see what I'm saying? And whereas now it's kind of more so about like, yeah, who's got the banger? How quickly? So, so how, how do you how banger? do you feel? So, in, do you feel the same way about say someone like Dre, who doesn't you know, obviously doesn't write any Dre. Of his lyrics, Dre, uh, yeah. Doctor Dre, yeah, or like. Mm. Um, or even, for instance, Kanye on like where he didn't even write Jesus Walks. You know, I see them his... both. I see Dre as a producer. I, yeah. I've never really seen him as a rapper. He's yeah. a, obviously he's a he, you know he's got that delivery, a great voice as mm. a rapper. But I've never and he's never claimed to be a great so, lyricist. Yeah, so you don't feel like I've never had for, and with Kanye as well. Yeah, Kanye's never... always been a producer and an artist. So I felt like he's always put an, a product. And for him, it's more of an yeah. art thing. And in art, you always get people to help you and visually. Yeah. It's not always just one person. Mm-hmm. Never one person. Mm-hmm. But like Drake, like you know, like mm. I was Drake's a bit trying to claim. I was everything. a bit shocked by that. But you'd, but you'd feel upset if Nas came out and like you know. Oh, well, that would never happen. But of yeah. course. <laughs> that, but, no, but, but like if you if you look at Drake's <laughs> early influence, which was Fonte from Little Brother, yeah. yeah and yeah, if you yeah. if you if you if you study Little Brother and you, yeah. you realize, I mean, Fonte mastered that stuff, but yeah, Fonte could never really make it to the you know like yeah. present in a Commercial. way which was for the yeah for the mass audience. But like Fonte is a lyricist. Fonte yeah. is definitely writing every single fucking bar. Mm. And I mean, sometimes I listen to Drake albums. I think it's just the stuff he's talking about is so personal. I know he wrote that stuff, mm. but then it's like you know the other songs where are a little bit more like songs they're bangers yeah. I'm like mm, did he so how do you feel about <laughs> yeah. how do you feel about when you hear something that always makes me really sad Sinead O'Connor nothing compares to you how do you feel when you hear that song yeah. and you know she didn't write it well, that's I mean that's, that's that, minor. you know what I because I always knew from a young age Prince wrote that song mm. and I know it's about his well it, you know I know that she related it to her mum right. which I think is different for songwriters if you can take something that someone's been written for you and relate it to your own thing like did you know that Royce the Five Nine wrote the message for Dr Dre yeah, yeah. with Mary J Blige yeah. that's a personal mm. song he's talking about Easy E he's talking about all these people yeah. his brother dying and Dre conveyed it he 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 took it and he used those lyrics and he. He did, you know, he related to it. He kind mm. of emotionally attached himself to it. Same thing with Sinead O'Connor. Like, obviously, everyone knows the cry and the single teardrop. Mm. But she yeah. was thinking about her mom who passed away. So it's like, it doesn't matter who wrote it in that avenue because songwriting in pop has never been like, well, you don't write your own pop songs, you pussy. Mm. Like, it's, yeah. never, it's never been like that. But with bars, if you're a rapper, like, yeah. you need to take pride. I think it comes down to identity as rappers mm. because we, like, you know, like, in terms of music, it's about where you're from, it's your mm. family, it's where you grew up, it's your friends your lifestyle yeah. and if people are mimicking that for you and writing it for you it's not going to be as, as, yeah, as of sincere course. man of course um, but yeah but at the same time like now it's out there I want I want someone to kind of question him on it Drake now is risen to the level where he's actually just a machine and because he's just he's a, a brand. machine yeah, yeah the brand is too strong mm. I feel like his finesse team is doing bits for him. Oh yeah. man, big time. Bits. Fucking amazing. I hope that's the actual name for the department. That does yeah. Really finesse. yeah. Finesse. Are you moist? Do you not write your own bars? Yeah, <laughs> Contact the finesse team. Exactly. <laughs> and he just made tricks and everything. He's just not, he's just not had to address none of it. He doesn't, he doesn't. At know. all. He's he just kind of gone, oh yeah. And it well, came out. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's just like, oh and it yeah. Was, well. It's public knowledge. I thought it was bullshit. He tried to do it in a way where it's just like, Niggas is trying to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like his life yeah. was in danger. Yeah. Like, Drake. <laughs> well, Someone I mean, found your life is old hard drive and your van. Your loud. life is definitely like, like, not in danger. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you do you think it? Do you think it's a, the finesse team that's telling him to 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 dress or to to follow the UK kind of crime no, I think, angle? I think I think he probably really likes that shit. Mm, yeah. I reckon he's got a Netflix account. Top Boy's on Netflix. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think, but oh, I think it's just new to us because we we haven't had We that. haven't had that before. We haven't had that before. We haven't had what we've done as being cool unless yeah. we're but a, you, a character but in But we have snatch, to remember you know what I mean? that we fucking made it wavy. And if, mm. if do you know what I mean? And as soon as we get gassed and think, oh yeah, Americans, they like it, yeah. It's like, fam, I've got I've got friends in music from America that I really enjoy their stuff and mm. I think 
talent-wise, concept-wise, ability-wise, they're far ahead and they're amazing. Yeah. And I build general, genuine rapports with people. Mm. But as an overall allure, I'm bro- no, that's dead. No more. No more you're from America, so you're looking at my in, my whole scene with like a little bit of a, I'm going to help you out. Suck your mum, rude boy. <laughs> because we're Nang too, innit? And we're actually slightly more Nang than you. I can say I grew up around Graham. I can't even tell you I grew up on Graham. There's bare Graham things I don't know because I didn't care that much. Mm. But like, I'm never going to beg it. There's and a thing. lot of people do now. Yeah, yeah. allow it. Oh, don't man, beg I remember Because no, even, even, no, even no, though no. I, wasn't, I wasn't on Graham, I, I know when you're begging it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I know I'm like, yeah, nah, same. Oh, yeah, and it was part of my culture, but I wasn't a grime kid. Yeah. I, I'm, like, I'm you never know it's a part of your now. culture. Exactly the but same. the attitude, the attitude it came from was, was basically, it was London because London takes all of these influences. Do you know what I'm saying? And yeah. because things start to um, cross over, just even geographically. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, the, the, the mixture of, Caribbeans in, in West and, mm. and how that had effect mm. on the music scene out there and all that kind of stuff it starts to take effect so we've seen all that we grew up through all of that and now it's kind of like okay cool we don't actually care anymore because it's boring like it, the whole like waiting for them to give a shit is long like people yeah. tried to bust it didn't Wait, work yeah. do you know what I'm saying so now that we've just got to that whole like right, where's your backbone say it with your chest kind of shit they're trying to come over and now it's like oh fuck They've never done this before. So, we'd like, everyone's just on titty, like, bro, allow it, cuz, like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, just keep doing your thing. Yeah. If they, I, you know, I, I never, if Americans I never... come and they like your stuff, they like it. Do you know what I'm saying? Respect that. The same way if my man down the road likes your thing and he's ready to pay for a ticket and not ask you for fucking guest list, and do you know what I'm saying? And come to your thing, stand front row, mm. big up his chest and spit your lyrics. If he likes it, appreciate him more yeah. than my man that's just got what? Exactly. Like, le- you're dead. You, you know you're what it is for me? Like, even though <laughs> not yeah. being a, a proper garage grime kid, but it's like, it has memories. Yeah. It has mad yeah. memories when you hear certain tunes, you know what I mean? Well, also, because I didn't, even though the scenes were very segregated, yeah. like, it, it, it was grime or it was hip hop, but to me, I saw it as all the, the kind of the same thing. So it was people I would never say I was grime from day. I you know I've got I, I bought P's and Q's when it came out on vinyl. Mm, mm. I bought uh yeah, what's an immaculately written yeah. record. Oh yeah, yeah of I course. think that transcends. There's a well, few few artists who trans yeah, so Kano, bought, Dizzy, where they trans yeah, I bought Pies, yeah, I bought yeah. Pow, I bought everything yeah, on record yeah. and I was they playing transcended them back though. That, that was just the British the like best written records of oh, all man. time. Bro, all I got Kano's album, bro. I love Kano's album. Two of his tracks on there, the one about his sister, he's trying to reconnect with her. And he's about his friend who grew apart. Bro, that shit hit me because when you go through this life and you get success and, you know, you leave some people Mm. behind, people, you change, people change. I've lost a lot of good friends through this success stuff. You know what I mean? I've lost, it's been weird for me. You know what I mean? And it's like, people don't know how to react to your success or you don't know how to react to their reactions. So those, a few of those songs, I really, really resonated with me. You know what I mean? And I love the album and I think Kano's actually gotten better yeah, as an artist through mm. the years, I think his pen game is ridiculous. His yeah. flows are yeah crazy. See that Ruben made that the thing with him the other. You know Ruben. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big yeah, up, big up, big, yeah, big up, Ruben. Ruben. Dan, Ruben Dan you know how he does side. it as well, brothers. Well, he's a G. He just hollered at us on Facebook, and then he started doing really? all the our promo work for Series Two. And now look at him, bro. He's doing like. He's, he's like um, Ruben Dangor did the artwork for my EP I Don't Even Like You yes. where he drew drew my face yeah and then I saw that he's now he's doing the, the grime portrait so he's yeah. just absolutely uh, fucking my man. killing yeah, you've it seen like, it, yeah, bro. he's a G, yeah. he's a G. I love Ruben so much like, yeah. he's such he's, a good guy and, he and, he's, and he's such a talent as well oh, man. so how, yeah. Yeah. how to, to talk good. talk through the, the Corrupt FM live show because I haven't even witnessed yeah, it yeah, you so. haven't been whenever you lot want man we're gonna we're doing like every festival annoyingly every festival Festival. Basically, we're, we're actually going to refine the live show now, but it's it's, it's consisting of like a garage set mm. with comedy, Great. with a few of our songs we've done. But yeah, it's just like a whole corrupt FM experience. Yeah. I come out and do the intro. There's moments we do like we play some dance or we play some reggae. Like yeah. you say, if you tune into Corrupt FM 108.9, yeah. it's a real pirate radio station. It's mm. like that. Just dickheads <laughs> on the mic chatting. Yeah. Things go wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it's it's just part of it. But, <laughs> but at the same time, we never ever break the music for the way you're going to be. Like because people are a rave. Yeah. They don't want to hear fucking jokes. You want to skank, mm. innit? Yeah. Yeah. But you want to skank and then see something and laugh. 
Yeah. So it's like that, innit? But no, 100%. Cool. Whenever you lot want, holler at me. Sick. You got guest list for life. Don't hold <laughs> me. No, no. <laughs> but like, you know, you know, no, no, of course, bro. Because like, well, I went down to see uh, Ruben uh, when he was at, he, the, tape. He, at the tape. Oh, so I came down to Tate yeah. Britain. And it was, and I saw, I couldn't get downstairs to see you guys. For people who don't know, the, the Tate Britain did an evening where they were trying to, I guess, curate more, I hate the word, but more urban, <laughs> urban things. <you> know? <laughs> and, uh, and they had all the, you know, all this stuff going on. It was really, it was actually really cool. It was, and, um, it was mad there because they were basically, it was a 14 and up show. Mm. Yeah, so like, we, we've got, so we, 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 we forget how many kids fans we have that who are kids. We forget that because yeah. we think it's not, we don't make it for kids. Mm. We make it for, yeah, yeah, grown I, and yeah, sexy yeah. you know what I mean because <laughs> it's, it's yeah. levels isn't it yeah, like yeah, you can't course. just watch it and be like we, sure. you know you got to understand it down. there's yeah. references to the show you yeah. only you know you but understand. anyway you're all welcome we're not saying you know. but obviously <laughs> these little dickhead youths yeah they've never been to a rave we before. love keep, keep watching so they keep were watching. in the take they were in the, the take you know and mm-hmm. we come out and we do a show but they're blazing zoots throwing bottles we did one song and we had to go because it was just a madness so it was that a riot. was it so I was upstairs where they were showing what was going on down Downstairs, yeah, the live stream on, on, that was a on the live idea. stream on the yeah. screen, and then the, the sound cut out. Yeah, because people were rushing the stage. Yeah, people were stealing shit, off stealing the stage. shit, yeah. and then there was riots. There was Slow some down. in the Tate. Yeah. It was mad, and I was there with Michael Payne. Big up Michael Payne yeah, every yeah, time. Yeah. We were just kind of looking at each other, going, "What this is, is happening?" People rush the stage to steal. It's kids in it, bro. The thing is, you know, like eighteen and up, you go to a rave. You're gonna, you, you, you might get waved. You might get. Yeah. You're gonna, you're not gonna act like a dickhead, are yeah. you? You're gonna enjoy yourself. Yeah. You know? yeah. But these kids, think about it. They're not allowed to go to any of our raves. Mm. So th- mm. for them to see their TV, their, their, you know, their favorite TV show, yeah. see these guys in person. We came out, bro. Just kids smoking suits, throwing bottles. It was just a madness. It but it's fun to see, though. So like, fun. <laughs> fun, to, you know, fun to see that we can get that kind of excitement. So fun. And, also and people appreciate like, the art as well. People the came art, and saw his yeah. art, bro, which is a great thing. It was thing. such a crazy, like, juxtaposition because you oh, had man. all of these paintings for, like, Monet and, and all you, of this yeah, stuff. Yeah. And then you had yeah, people, was, like, writing. Yeah, no. Let's it just say, I don't, I don't think we'll be invited back. Let's just say. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna get a call back for that shit. Men's but yeah, it was crazy. You, you, you've done some kind of like high high art performances in places like that, right? I'm sure you have. You must have at least Me? done poetry, kind of. You know, I've been about a block. <laughs> Opening for Ghostface though, bro. That's, That's gonna be fun. Personally. I'm a huge mm-hmm. Ghostface Wu Tang fan, obviously. Yeah. yeah, and you know, I grew up in his music. I went to go see a Ghostface concert back mm. in the day at Scarlet. Yeah. Oh. Bruv, like mm-hmm. one of the worst shows I've ever been to. Yeah, he stopped halfway through. Yeah, and started selling T-shirts oh, on stage, no. and then some kid grabbed him and he was like, "Yo, man, this shit ain't for free, sir." Huh? He's like, "You gotta pay for this shit, man." Woke up, man. The thing is, he admits it. He says, "Yeah, he, he, he think he knows he's a dick." It's like Doom. Mm. Like Doom will openly scam you. He'll say he's the villain. You know, yeah. don't go see Doom live. I'd say mm. that I've seen him a few times. He's never, it's never really. Man, I, I hosted, it. I hosted a rave where he, where um, you know, he he, he, he put his double. He put the double came in. <laughs> And I was there and, be, and, and to do a DJ set as well. And he came in, <laughs> Doom, like I'm doing the quotation hand things, but like he Doom, came, yeah. did Doom yeah. and he came, he came in and I mean, I won't speak on like the business side of things. I wasn't involved in I've that. I've heard but, about that as well. But yeah, like, yeah. Uh, you know, luckily it wasn't my night, but I, I was literally just on mic, like hosting it and people were, and he came on there's just this guy just some fat guy with a mask on <laughs> <laughs> and I like that. the audacity and, but I don't even think he was a big guy I think it was literally I could because I was stood next to him it was some guy just wearing like lots of t-shirts <laughs> some skinny guy I and then lost like, weight man yeah and he, then he pressed play and it was a it was a mix but I've now understood that Doom is an album artist I, I yeah, listen yeah, to yeah. your albums I'm not going to go see you live yeah. <laughs> well, like, I've I've been I've been I've lucky enough to open I've opened up for Method Man once, oh, and like he the sh- his show was incredible. Oh, despite yeah, I've being, seen him before. He's amazing. Just despite being, you know, like I I'd, I'd gone on enough. I'm going to do my opening set. It was at um, Matter uh, at the O2. So oh, it was yeah, a yeah, sick, yeah. sick venue. Yeah, it's right? a good venue. A couple thousand people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm I'm up there and I'm like doing my set, just like hyping up the crowd. It was like, a sick show, and I'm so amped. All my boys are there. I'm just doing like classics, you know, just bang, bang, bang. Yeah. And then, like, they had a support act. It was one of, like, the Wu affiliates comes on. And I'm like, okay, cool. I can go to the bar now and get drunk. So I go to the bar. I start drinking, like, heavily. And I'm getting real waved. And then the support act come off. And then the promoter comes over to me and it's like, Method Man's refusing to come out. You have to go back on. And I'm, at this point, 
so drunk <laughs> that I'm like, I don't know what's going on. People are booing, doing all this shit. Why? When did he come out? Was... I don't even know. I'm not even going to speculate. But wow. he, he, I just go up there and I just had to like, I just kept on just playing. I just, just killed it. I just went off, just went off on one. I just did this like, like waved. Set. have no idea what I played, but it was all right. But they were just, it was a very tough crowd. It's weird that sometimes I see DJs who are lick. I'm not going to say any names, yeah. but they are out of their <laughs> fucking face. Mm. Like, especially at festivals and that. Yeah. Like Outlook last year, oh. I saw a few DJs who I thought, like he just threw up. <laughs> yeah, he just he just threw up before he went on stage. I've done no, that. Not gonna say any names, but you lot can take guesses. But like, yeah, and I was like, how do you? Some, but he was, he, the set was impeccable. It's autopilot. Sometimes it works. Yeah, it's, it's autopilot. autopilot. You yeah. just you work on your instinct, innit? That's Big just time. The DJs are still mixing. Yeah, yeah standard. No, I've def- I've done that so many times. Just absolutely smashed, and somehow managed to DJ to the point where I can't stand up sometimes, Fuck. but I can still mix. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I have no idea how the fuck that works. But yeah, no, it definitely works. Um, so listen, thank, thank, before before I wrap it up, uh, is the final plugs, I guess. So 23 Winters is out now, Koji Radical. 23 Winters is out now. Check my Instagram, because I'm going to delete it when I'm famous. <laughs> <laughs> so screen grab it. Make sure you screen grab it. Um, follow me on Twitter. Hold up my mum. Hold up my dad. Shout out. Shout out, skeptic. Man like G. That's him. Big up our studio audience. Yeah, yeah. Big up. Big, big them up every big time. Up. Free ball. Standard. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Same shit, man. Uh, people, Fri- sh- people, people just nothing. nothing coming in the summer. Yeah, um, amazing. Fridays, the Hoff thing on Dave, and then yeah, we're all over every festival. Thank you so much to my guests, Asim Chowdhury and Koji Radical. Uh, this has been the Thanks for Trying podcast. Uh, make sure you tune in again next month. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Thank you so much to my guests Asim Chowdhury and Koji Radical. You've been listening to episode three of the Thanks for Trying podcast. A big thank you to Seb White, the producer of the show, and also to Red Leg Rum for getting us all pissed. The Thanks for Trying podcast will return, of course, next month. <laughs>